In this video, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about statistical power and show you how to do a power analysis. Statistical power says, or answers the question, whether your model is strong enough to detect significant effects that actually do exist. So, for example, I have these two models here, one in Smart PLS and one in Amos, and they're the exact same model. Um, and let's say I theorized that efficacy would have a positive effect on skill acquisition, but I find that that effect is not significant when I run my model. Same over here in Smart PLS. This effect is probably not significant. Well, what do I do? Do I say, efficacy does not affect skill acquisition? Well, I can, but first I need to do a power an analysis. I need to determine if I have sufficient confidence to say that efficacy does not impact skill acquisition. Because if, if my study was not powerful enough statistically to detect significant effects on this dependent variable, then I cannot say with confidence that efficacy does not affect skill acquisition. So, Let's go test for power. How would I do this? I would go to the internet. I would type in, let's see, statistical power calcu there we go, okay, oop, calculator. Free post hoc, this is the one. Just take the Daniel Soper one, the free post hoc statistical power calculator. If it doesn't take you directly to this um, calculator, it'll probably take you here this huge list of calculators, just scroll down to the bottom to statistical power. Click on post hoc statistical power for multiple regression. Here are the things we need. We need a number of predictors. Let me show you where we'll find that. We conduct statistical power analysis for each endogenous variable. So skill acquisition is the endogenous variable in question at this point. It has two predictors, playfulness and efficacy. So here I would put two observed R squared. In Amos, the way you get the observed R squared is you look at this top right number, and in this instance it's 0 0.08. How do I obtain that? You go to the analysis properties, output squared multiple correlations needs to be checked. Okay, so 0 0.08 is what I have. That's not very good, by the way. Probability level. What is our desired confidence level? I'd like to say with 95% confidence whether an effect does or does not exist. So I'll put 0 0.05 there, the alpha level. And what is my sample size? In this case, it's 377. Your power is going to be highly sensitive to your sample size, just by the way. Hit calculate. And it says that our observed statistical power is 0.999, etc. This is really good, really good power. You want to observe at least 0.8. If you do not achieve the 0.8 level, then you do not have enough statistical power to say that this effect right here is not, does not exist, is not significant. You can only say that in the context of your study, you did not have sufficient statistical power to detect significant effects. You cannot say efficacy does not impact skill acquisition. You don't have enough statistical power to say so. But we do, since we have a 0.999 uh, statistical power. Now we can say with confidence, 95% confidence, that efficacy does not affect skill acquisition in the context of our study. That is, how we collected data, what instrument we used, etc. Now, let me show you how sensitive this is to um, sample size. Let's say we had 100. Watch the sample size change. I mean the power change. Notice it dropped below 0.8. So we do not we would not have enough statistical power if we only had a sample size of 100. It's also very sensitive to the R square. Let's say we had an R square of 0.15, but still a low sample size of just 100. Hit calculate. Oops, I had an extra decimal in there. Now we have power 0.968. That's plenty of power. So your power is very sensitive to R square and sample size. Let's do this for the uh, smart PLS model. Same relationship, 
0 0.064. How do we know if it's significant? Well, we'll go to a bootstrap right here. This is going to produce a T statistic. Ooh, that's kind of close. We're looking for something around 1.9, 1 1.96. Above that would be significant. Uh, this is close, so the question is, do we have enough statistical power to determine that this is truly not significant? Here we go. We have, again, two predictors. Our observed R-square is not showing. To get that, we need to go to the PLS algorithm and run that. And the R-square shows up in the circle. We have an R-square of 0 0.094. I'll stick that in here right here, 0 0.94, probability level, I would still like it at 0 0.05, and my sample size is again 377. Hit calculate. Yep, I've got plenty of power to detect significant effects. That means this effect is not significant in the context of our study, and we can be confident in saying so. Well, that's a power analysis. I hope that helps. Best of luck. I forgot to mention one last thing. When do you do a power analysis? You need to do it when you do not find your theory is supported, when you have a path that you thought would be significant, but it was not. Do you need to do a power analysis for this path right here, playfulness affecting skill acquisition? No, you do not. It is significant, therefore you had enough power to detect a significant effect. If all of your paths are significant, there is no need for a power analysis.